Good morning. Welcome to Online Sunday School. We're going to continue in the book of Romans, but first let us go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we praise your name this morning. We worship you because you are mighty and awesome and worthy of our praise. Father, we ask this morning that you open our ears so that we may hear your word, our minds so that we may understand your word, and our hearts so that we may share your word with the world. And it's in your Son Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. We've been talking about the book of Romans, and up to this point, keep in mind that Paul is talking to the church in Rome. He has not visited them, but he is hoping that this can be a launching point for missions all the way to Spain. At this point, the church is a mixture of Jews and Gentiles. And among them, there is a, a feeling that the Jews have some kind of superiority over the Gentiles. So Paul is trying to show the church that indeed we are all sinners. We are all in need of salvation and that that puts us on equal footing. He says, even if with the Jews having the law, they don't follow the law, and even if they could follow the law, we don't, we don't earn our salvation. It is a gift from God through Jesus Christ and his work on the cross. So both the Gentile and the Jew are in need of this. Now, he talked about Abraham and how Abraham, many in the Jewish community believed that Abraham was righteous because he followed the law, even though that was before the law had been given to them. But in truth, we know that Abraham was righteous because of his strong faith in God, not his works. Let's not forget, Abraham wasn't a perfect man either. And this is the, the father of, of the Jewish as well as the Gentile of many nations. And yet he could not be perfect either. And this was all from what happened with Adam. So... This all comes from man's tendency to sin and how that sin, because God is righteous and holy, that sin blocks the relationship that we can have with God. And so God made a way through Jesus Christ. So we're going to start with Romans chapter 5, verse 1 through 5. And this is what Paul has written. Therefore, since we have just, just justified through faith, we have peace in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith into this grace in which we now stand. And we rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. Not only so, but we also rejoice in our sufferings because we know that suffering produces perseverance and perseverance character and character hope. And hope does not disappoint us because God has poured out his love into our hearts by the Holy Spirit, whom he has given us. So he says that with this salvation, we have peace and joy. Now this isn't peace as in a peace of mind. This is peace.
peace that is comes with a relationship with God. Also, notice that it sounds uh, familiar when he says, from suffering comes perseverance, and perseverance character, and character hope. We, heard, we hear that in the book of James, when James is talking about the very same thing. So, this peace is not possible if we're justified through our works. We can't gain it from doing good deeds. It's only the peace that we can get through Jesus Christ. And that's the repaired relationship, the renewed relationship that we gain with God because of what was done on the cross. Otherwise, we're struggling to do good, and we will fail. We will fail. We cannot do good to make up for our sin. This comes only when we are justified by our faith, as Abraham was and is. Only in or through Christ and that's a lasting peace that doesn't leave. It's a, it's a relationship with God. Now, Paul is also talking about hope. And that hope comes through Christ. That veil, that curtain between us and God is torn and is removed so that we can have a relationship. This is our ultimate purpose. Our ultimate purpose is finally realized that we are there to have a relationship with God and to glorify God, not ourselves. Our suffering is meaningful. When we suffer, we can rejoice in it, not because of it. So rejoicing in it because we know that God is working on us, shaping us, building us, and, in, and further moving us toward the realization that we should, that our purpose is met. God is manifested in our lives, and that is where the hope is. It builds character and patience. Now, James further goes on to remind us that Christ died not just for the believer, but for the ungodly. That's who he died for. A doctor doesn't come to heal someone who is well. They come to heal the sick. So we'll start with verse 6 and read through 8. You see, at just the right time, when we were still powerless, Christ died for the ungodly. Very rarely will anyone die for a righteous man, though for a good man someone might possibly dare to die. But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. He didn't die because we were worthy. We're not worthy. He died for us while we were yet sinners. We're justified and reconciled with him through this act. Reading further, verse 9. Since we have now been justified by his blood, how much more shall we be saved from God's wrath through him? For if when we were God's enemies, we were reconciled to him through the death of his son, how much more, having been reconciled, shall we be saved through his life? Not only is this so, but we also rejoice in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, 
through whom we have now received reconciliation. So we're saved by his blood. His blood pays the price for our sin and saves us. And then through his death, we are reconciled. And through his resurrection, we're given hope. Now, Paul goes further to talk about how we have earned death through Adam and life through Christ. And we'll read further in chapter 5, starting at verse 12. Therefore, just as sin entered the world through one man and death through sin... And in this way, death came to all men because all sinned. For before the law was given, sin was in the world. But sin is not taken into account when there is no law. Nevertheless, death reigned from the time of Adam to the time of Moses, even over those who did not sin by breaking command as, Ad as did Adam, who was a pattern of the one to come. So what's he saying here? He's saying that Adam introduced sin and because the wages of sin is death, he introduced death. We begin life with a sinful nature. We think oftentimes of, of children and babies as innocent. But have you ever watched children play? They're not selfless. They're not free of sin. Even then, not knowing what they're doing, there's a tendency to be concerned with the self first. We are all begin with a sinful nature. And because of that sinful nature, man has to suffer both a spiritual death as well as a physical death. And that's what... Paul is talking about here. This act of from Adam has created a spiritual death. It has brought a universal ruin to man. By contrast, Christ brings life. Starting with verse 15, but the gift is not like the trespass. For if the many died by the trespass of the one man, how much more did God's grace and the gift that came by the grace of the one man, Jesus Christ, overflow to the many? Again, the gift of God is not like the result of the one man's sin. The judgment followed one sin and brought condemnation but the gift followed many trespasses and brought justification. For if by the trespass of the one man death reigned through that one man, how much more will those who receives God, receive God's abundant provision of grace and of the gift of righteousness reign in life through the one man, Jesus Christ? So Christ gives, God's grace is greater than sin. And salvation is available to all. Then he goes further to say, Consequently, just as the result of one trespass was condemnation for all men, so also the result of one act of righteousness was justification that brings life for all men. For just as through the disobedience of one man the many were made sinners, so also the, through the obedience of one man the many will be made righteous. So he's saying salvation is available to all through Christ, but it has to be received. You have to accept that. Not all will be saved because not all will receive it. And then he goes further. The law was added so that the trespass might increase, but where sin increased, grace increased all the more, 
so that just as sin reigned in death, so also grace might reign through righteousness to bring eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. The law is not designed to bring redemption. It is designed to, to reveal sin, to show it, because we will not be able to follow the law to its completion. It reveals sin in contrast to God's holiness. It shows us our iniquities. But we have hope and we have peace and we have joy because we have the grace of God through Jesus Christ. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you that you sent your Son to die for us. Thank you that you showed us mercy and grace so that we could be reconciled with you. For it's in your Son's holy name we praise you and thank you. Amen. Next week, we're going to continue with chapter 6. Go forward this week and show the love and the peace and the joy that you have through Jesus Christ. Have a great week.